Welcome back to the workbench. Today we're going to fix my Backman standard class Ford model locomotive that arrived with me in 1989. She was already second hand back then, but nearly new. To make sure this guide is clear, we start off with close up photos and end the video with some video action. Back in 2014 I discovered that she had a problem. A problem that I understand is common to the standard class 4 and B1 from the time. I thought I'd fixed it then, but when I got her out for another run in October 2023, the problem was back, but far, far worse. What's the issue? The nylon plastic inserts fitted into the driving wheels swell up and increase in size due to moisture absorption, a well-known issue with some nylons. As you can see in these close-ups, the middle of the inserts has domed out, trapping the coupling rods, meaning the loco can't move at all. In 2014, I had lifted the inserts, scraped a little away, and superglued them back, but this time they were greatly swollen, even bending some of the cranks outwards. There was nothing for it but a strip down that required removal of the crank pins. As you can see here, I'm using a 2.5mm nut spinner for the job. I decided to do one wheel at a time to prevent issues with quartering later. Using a small screwdriver, I pried out the inserts as you can see here. It's very domed and swollen. My plan was to heat it up with a hairdryer and then place the insert between two coins and clamp them in my vise to try and flatten out the insert. As you can see, this did work. However, when I tried the insert back on the wheel face, it was way too big and would bulge again if I forced it. Therefore I spent quite some time using files, wet and dry paper and a scalpel to reduce the thickness and circumference. After some experimentation I realised that this approach wasn't going to work, so I decided to try a different method. I therefore marked the side of the chassis with a black cross and the back of the corresponding wheel and then removed the wheel set from the chassis. As can be seen, behind the insert is a metal moulding, complete with spokes, but no balance weight or crank cover. Having marked the position of the balance weight on the wheel, I then took the nylon insert and carefully cut out the crank cover and balance weight using fine side cutters or a scalpel. Some tidying up and thinning down using wet and dry paper will be required. Then, having applied superglue to the required area of the wheel, I carefully positioned the two detail parts. After the glue was set, I overpainted everything, including the nylon parts and wheel side tyre with black satin paint. This adds depth once it's dried. Looking at this photo, you can see that the wheel looks okay now, and nothing is fouling the coupling rods anymore. I was next going to do the same to the middle driving wheels, however, the crank pin cannot be withdrawn as it's a push fit and there is a lot connected to it including radius rod, coupling rods, piston rod etc. Indeed there is even a very tiny circlip around the top of the crank pin head. My only option was to carefully cut away the plastic inserts with the wheels in place using the brass worm on the motor to rotate the wheels as required. This was a very slow job indeed, but eventually I was able to affix crank covers and balance weights as before. Again, everything was overpainted with black satin paint. The back wheel set was dealt with, as the front set was. Alright, let's have a look at the results. Here we have some close-ups of the chassis and its wheels. Honestly, I'm quite surprised how good it all looks. All that remained for me to do was place some black tape over the motor to hide it once the body was back on. After a bit of a dusting off, here she is with her new, or should I say backup wheels in place. What do you think? The only way we'll know if she's fixed is if I take her down to the layout for a test run. As you can see, and here, she is running rather well, a huge improvement on the very poorly locked up loco I started with.
the southern green bullied coaches are rather appropriate, as this Loco 75073 was a southern locomotive for most of her short life. She started off in November 1955, new to Exmouth Junction Shed. By June 1956 she was at East Lee Shed, then in April 1957 she found herself at Bath Green before heading to Templecombe for November 1962. She was withdrawn in December 1965 and sadly cut up in April 1966. A service life of just 10 years, one month and one day. Shameful really, and weirdly my model has actually seen three times the service life of the real thing. Anyway, what's the verdict? Let me know what you think in the comments. I really hope this video will help others to keep their models running. Bye for now.